Hello friends, welcome to Akul Mac Live and uh, today we want to talk about mental health. Uh, I know that this subject has been discussed several times by many people, but today we want to discuss about how mental health can be improved for businesses, for individuals and for family. And to have this discussion, I will be joined by a very good friend of mine from UK, Mr. Rebel Kun. So without further ado, let's welcome him. Good morning, CK. Good morning, everybody. Yeah, we've we've heard a lot about mental health over the last, let's say, two years while we've been talking about COVID. And I'm not talking today, I don't want to touch today about the medical issues that people have in the mental health arena. So those people that are potentially suicidal, they've got depression, those sort of arenas, we're, we're not going to talk about. Um, because those are medical issues. We're going to talk very simply about the things that we are in control of and we know we're in control of and we can take a great example for instance Novak Djokovic has eventually been deported from Australia having literally tried to bend the rules according to the press I mean you know we don't know everything but effectively the legal system at the end of the day have said you've tried to manipulate the rules and we're not having it because it's not fair to every, anyone else. It's not fair to Australians. It's not fair to any other athletes. Um, goodbye. Go home. So we haven't heard the last of this, so you can watch it um, unravel in the papers. Um, but let me ask you, CK, the simple question. As it's unfolded here, what, what's going through your mind as being questionable as to the mental state of this top, the... the top tennis player in the world well level as far as i am concerned it's just a simple jab just take a jab and uh, uh, you know get over with it and start playing australian open and uh, of course you are the top seed player so personally i believe two reasons one could be that he is taking some medicines which uh, uh, because of which he doesn't want to take any other vaccination which he wants to keep it secret uh, otherwise, why, you know, he, he would go all out with all guns blazing against taking a jab. Number two is, uh, I think he's made it an ego issue where he says that, okay, my way is because I said it first that I don't want to take a jab and uh, I'm following certain principles of, of my life. So I think he made it an ego issue. And since he knows that he is a top seed player, he can arm twist the government of Australia. I think these are the two reasons. Uh, what do you think uh, uh, about my assessment, Neville? Well, again, what, what's happening here is we're seeing it in the news. I mean, we're seeing it plastered all over our news. I don't know about you in India. Um, and it is headline news. But after a while, you know, he's had a court case where the... the um, the judge actually said, no, you can stay. You've met all the rules. And, and this phrase has been said several times. What else could this man do? Um, and yet what came out in the court case was that one of the defences that he had was that he'd actually contracted COVID before Christmas in the middle of December. But having contracted it, he then went in public arenas and made presentations. Um, so the question there is, it's not that he hasn't been vaccinated. It's the fact that he had this highly infectious disease. And because of his personal schedule, his publicity schedule, he went into the public arena and made presentations. That's been challenged now. You know, so what is the mental state of an individual that's got this highly transferable disease going into a public place saying, well, it's OK because you won't catch it because I'm the number one tennis player in the world. <laughs> that's more or less what what people are saying, you know, and I, I love the guy, you know, don't get me wrong. I, I think it's fantastic, you know, and, and the Australian Open will be very sad to see him not there. However, there is an issue, and we're starting this discussion, really, over someone who's a highly paid professional at the very top of his game, and you've got to question his mental health. 
what's it going to do for him now, having been deported? Because as, as you, anyone knows that's involved in tennis, there is a circuit. They move from one tournament to the next to the next. And they're, you know, they can't just turn it on. They can't just turn up in Australia one day and start playing the following day. Because these are top athletes. These are highly prone individuals that have got a training schedule, that have got a metabolism, that have got an eating schedule, that have got a sleeping schedule. And if any of that is disrupted, they don't feel good. And mentally, they don't feel good either. So we talk about having, you know, good, healthy mind, healthy body, and then you can be the best you can be. So he's just one example at the very top of the game where his mental health now is going to be challenged. How strong is he? And anyone involved in, in high sports, we do know that the top performers are a little crazy, you know, or they appear crazy to the majority of people in the world because they are so regimented, they're so disciplined. And you've only got to look at people like Ronaldo, you know, and, um, you know, David Beckham in the days gone by, they would religiously spend two hours after practice just practicing on their own, free kicks, keepy uppies, bending a free kick here, bend it over there. In fact, you know, there was a movie called Bend It Like Beckham, if you can recall, sort of back in the 90s. Um, so they these are a, a somewhat fastidious. They are probably a, in the... Um, OCDC, it's like spectrum at the end of it, because everything has to be perfect. You know, what time of day they get up, what the time the alarm goes, etc., etc. Now, for normal individuals like you and me, we don't have to be that regimented. I know some people are, but we don't have to be. But we do need some form of diary that we follow to make sure that we've got best mental health so let me ask you a simple question have you got a diary like a a, a mental or physical um, or a digital diary that keeps you on track for the day that keeps you sane keeps you smiling as you as you currently are have you got a a diary that you could keep going with Absolutely, Neville. In fact, I have a diary without which I cannot function. And the first thing that I refer in the morning is my emails. I clear my inbox. And second thing is my diary so that I know what are my appointments. And I find it very, very difficult to operate, um, you know, because if I don't have a diary, I will have so much mental botheration on my head because I don't know what is going to happen now. So I maintain a diary. It's a it's an ebook. It's a Microsoft calendar. And I insist uh, with all my known people and friends to send me a diary entry. Otherwise, I will not be able to function. There you go. You know, and the point is it works for you. It may not work for everybody else. I mean, I get people saying, oh, send me your email. And I say, well, why do you need my email? You've got me on WhatsApp. You know, um, It's just the way people function. And this is the, this is the, the simple part of being mentally healthy. And that's having a schedule. And let me ask you another question, okay? I've, I've got lots of answers for myself, CK, but the whole point about other people learning here is what does it mean to you? You know, you're the host of the show. So when things go wrong, what do you do? Well, um, if, you know, it's every day is a different day and every day will not be right. Um, there is bound to be some uh, Murphy's uh, Murphy law playing its role on daily basis. There could be something wrong, uh, but then you tend to find a way out and uh, change the routine. Maybe uh, sometimes go for a walk or sometimes ignore whatever is happening. Continue with your job. I think uh, ignorance is best. That is what I would say. Just ignore what is going on wrong and things are going south. They will go south. You can't control it. But then just ignore it and move on, think positive. That is what I do, uh, Neville. See, that, that's great advice because you said, you know, um, every day is different. Things do not go to plan. 
So it's not necessarily having a plan B. It's knowing when it's not going to plan, how it's affecting you. And that's one of the things that I think a lot of people really struggle with. So rather than plow through it, as most people do, you know, and, and let's just take, you know, if you've got a headache, the obvious remedy for a headache is drink more water because you're probably dehydrated. That's what a doctor might say to you. Take a tablet, a paracetamol, an aspirin, you know, whatever, whatever it, it might need. But the last thing you should be doing, I don't know anybody giving this advice that I'm about to say. Keep going because it'll go away. Just keep plowing ahead, you know. And you smile and you laugh because I don't know anyone saying that. But guess what? We all do it. I do it. Hands up. Come on, CK. I know you do it. If you've got a headache, you just say, oh, no, I've got to finish this. I've got to plow through it. And the point is, it really doesn't do you any good. Yeah, good. Put your hand up eventually. But it doesn't do us any good. So what we need to do is to be aware that something's wrong and then break the cycle. So a headache is a classic. But let's just say you've got a blockage in your thought process. Do you just keep plowing ahead and then the diary comes up because CK, you've got a diary and it will tell you 10 minutes before you need to know what you're doing and it will come up and then you say, oh, I still haven't finished this. It's putting pressure on you because you weren't aware of the pressure you were putting on yourself. And all of this is internal pressure. You know, it's your calendar. It's your diary. You can do what you like with it. But all of a sudden, we're now, oh, I've got to call this person. That's what the time I said. Rather than saying, hang on a minute, if I call this person when I'm in a mood, we're both not going to be happy about it. So I'm not saying don't call the person, but it's a choice not to call that person. But what you do need is the right choice now. You need to break the cycle. As you said, CK, you go for a walk. No, I just, sometimes I just physically get up and walk around the room and look at things and, and get my attention changed. So I'm not thinking of the same things that actually were making me mentally unhealthy. And this is all about your mental health at the end of the day. And we can do so many simple things, but we have to be aware of what's happening. So are you... Do you feel, CK, that you're pretty much aware of all the things that are happening that start to drag you down? Or do, on occasion, do you get dragged down and then you go, why didn't I stop earlier? Well, if you ask me, uh, my case may be different, but I don't, uh, since I have a diary, I will follow a schedule and continue doing that. And if something goes wrong, I take it uh, as it comes, you know, I don't plan things. I don't do any risk analysis of having taken one step because if I do, I will not even take two steps. So I don't do that. And I think coming back to this uh, top seated tennis player, I'm, you know, avoiding his name. Uh, I think he has set up a very bad example because there are other top seated players also in other sports. All of them have a good mental health. They have given good example of having good mental health. Whereas this person, he's so senior. He has the ability to move, move masses. Look what impression he is now giving to people. There are two kinds of impression he is giving. One, you know, because I'm a powerful person, I can flout the uh, laws of the government at the cost of people. You know, that is the first message that he has given. Second is that, uh, uh, you know, I'm a big guy. Why should I go uh, what other small people are doing? You know, why should I do and get the jabs? Because these are, you know, for small people, I'm a God. So I think obviously there are some uh, mental issues, uh, mental health issues here, which are uh, being uh, visible and setting a very wrong example. In fact, I'm a great fan of him. Uh, I'm a tennis player myself. Uh, but I think this is a uh, this is a very bad incident, uh, Neville. Well, so as far as he's concerned, I think his personal mental health has taken one hell of a 
you know, a shot. In fact, it's probably an ace and he needs to recover. He needs to recover from that serve. Um, and I'm sure he will, but he'll need time. You know, these top athletes do need time. I mean, you've only got to um, look at the stories of the some of the biggest athletes in the world. Dame Kelly Holmes, you know, the double gold winner at um, at the Olympics. Um, her story is interesting. I mean, she, she, she really struggles from um, depression. And some of the, you know, some of the big performers on the stage, it's a fine run thing. Be being having that adrenaline feed you through the day as opposed to being well scared i'm really scared to walk on the stage so all i'm saying is we've all got it in us so the upshot of today is just think about what you do when you do as you said ck you don't have a risk you don't do a risk assessment on the fly that's because you did a risk assessment before and you created a diary that actually works for you. So your risk assessment was probably the first time that you actually created that diary and then worked to it and found out, do you know what? Yeah, this really does work for me. I can do that. And that's the whole point. Get a system in place or a process, preferably a process, because processes always work. You can pinch these processes from anybody, but they will all say, the top people will all say very similar things. You know, create a schedule and stick to it. Don't create a schedule that is so tight that there's no flexibility in it. I think Warren Buffett famously said, he said, my diary is mostly empty, but I always get something to fill it. So that's the way... He's still got a diary, you know, it may fundamentally be empty, but he knows how to fill it. And the other thing is, you know, we do know that your 24 hours is exactly the same as my 24 hours. It goes tick, 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 tick. Your second is exactly the same as my second. But as we do know, when we're having fun, time flies. So I'd like everyone for time to fly because if you're having fun your mental health actually is being added to it's on the positive side so maybe you know whatever it is create a schedule that works for you because that will help you and it will help your friends your family your colleagues at work your supply chain your relationships in the business world it will make life a lot simpler for you and for them and then if it's making your life simpler guess what you'll start smiling more because things will start to happen and i can see that you're already reflecting on that ck because a smile came across your face and that's the whole point of these little sessions is we're all we're doing to say is what would this person do what would that person do but more importantly what we want to know is what you would do have you got a schedule? Do you keep to it? Has it got enough flexibility so that you don't panic about what you're doing? Because again, panic is a bad state of mental health. Don't want that. Don't need it. Are you aware of when things are going wrong to get up and break the cycle? Go for a walk, have a cup of tea, phone a friend. Or just imagine sitting on a beach, you know, why, you know, whatever it is that will really break the cycle. And when I say break the cycle, you've got to really break it. You can't just think about something else for a nanosecond, because guess what? You will go back to the cycle. You really do have to take yourself into a completely different place and have a deep, different thought. So hopefully that's been useful today. And um, as Frazier Crane in the program Frazier in the US, that I used to love watching, good mental health. <laughs> good mental health uh, for everyone. I think are, these are very good uh, advices you have given. Um, get uh, 
go out for a walk get inspiration from and solve your issues i think this is something that is great advice from you uh, neville as usual it was pleasure talking to you today we will catch up uh, in the next event until then i like to say goodbye for today goodbye everybody have fun um and if you don't have fun break the cycle and go and have fun well friends did you hear such good words from my great friend mr neville gun if you want to get engaged with us you can actually use this link which is uh, down below and you can uh, get associated with us and you can talk about your products your offerings and also get associated with us in whichever way you want there are many options so for today i like to say goodbye only to catch you again in the next one mm -hmm.